Hey guys, thanks for tuning back, and I'm Ryan Gibbons. I'm here to talk about the Desatia Vivid 11. If you watched our last video, we did a complete installation of the Vivid 11. We swapped it over from a T10 for the 5th Gen 4 runner. Um, so here today to talk a little bit more about the features, what comes with the Vivid 11, what you can come to expect, and uh, cover anything else we may have missed in the first video. So stay tuned. So once you get the car started up, you're presented with this home screen and there's a lot of different things you can customize here. Um, since you're connected to the ODBC, you'll actually see the speedometer here. Uh, if you have a radio station tuned, you'll see the name of the radio station. You can adapt the weather, update the time. You can log into your Google Maps and have your navigation kind of pre-configured, have preset radio stations. There's a ton of stuff you can do on here. Um, if you do not choose to use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you can use the native Google Maps that's built into it. I generally don't use this. I'm a strict kind of CarPlay person, but you do have that option. So if you go here to the additional apps, swipe over, you'll have to do a Bluetooth connection once to the radio to establish that wireless CarPlay connection. But once you do, click on the app and you're brought into CarPlay. So this is where, like I said, for me personally, I spend a lot of my time. Um, I use the Google Maps, Gaia GPS if we're off-roading, same thing with Onyx off-road if we're doing any kind of like overlanding or excursioning. Um, you've got those at your fingertips. The other cool thing is, uh, like I said, with Apple CarPlay, you can customize and add any any apps that are CarPlay enabled, and you can see how responsive it is, responsive it is from the touchscreen. To go to Spotify. If you're a Spotify person, if you're an Apple Music person, whatever your streaming service is, you can connect that here through the CarPlay. Just give you an idea of how straightforward it is. And the other cool thing is once you have this going on your on your uh, CarPlay, um, you can see how quick, quick and easy it is to change songs by the radio. So I won't click anything here. Those are through the steering wheel controls. You can see how quick it adapts to your phone and adapts to the screen. And then same thing here. You can change songs that way. So one of the other settings is, like I said, there's these car settings. There's another settings app over here. And this is where you have a little bit more uh, configuration. Same thing. You can change the actual wallpaper. You can do it from here as well. we'll go back to it. Car. The element here is where you're able to change some of these colors. So the rest of the interior is blue. Uh, all the interior lights are blue. So some of the newer Forerunners, I think it's 2014 plus, the interior um, illumination is a, is a blue. Um, but if you have an older Forerunner and you want to change that to the orange, you know, you can sit there and kind of play around with uh, the different, different colors. But you have a lot of different colors that are kind of set up already. You can adjust these panel light colors. You can go into that rainbow mode. I'm just gonna stick with blue for now. One of the other things that I think is important here under the car settings is the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto enable. I have that set up so the, the concept is every time you start up the car, the and if you've made that initial connection with your Android phone or with your Apple phone, it'll automatically fire up the CarPlay app, fire, fire up the Android Auto app, and uh, get you going right then and there. Like I said, that's what I use most. Um, so I have that enabled. You can turn that off if you just want to use the native UI, but if you want to use your Android Auto or CarPlay app functionality, I would suggest enabling that. So each and every time you turn it on the car, it's already set up for you. So again, I have the layout configured to the, uh, the card view. You can modify and move some of these cards around. If you want to add additional widgets, you can do that as well. Um, but I, don't really use the native UI, you have that option. Um, so if you wanna get in there and configure and add different tiles and things like that, you can absolutely do that. I generally go to the apps icon here, and this is where you have a ton of different apps. So if you wanna use Google Chrome, if you're driving, hopefully you're not driving, you're pulled over and you're doing it in the safest way possible, but you need to Google something real quick and you can't do it on your phone, and your phone, and your phone is connected to the radio, you can use Chrome, you can use Gmail, you can use YouTube. I've done it before. Uh, during the football season, we sign up for YouTube TV. 
just to stream football games and we have admittedly streamed football games on the radio while we're driving um but i'll say that i am pray paying attention and focused on the road my wife might not be but that's okay she's not driving and she can watch uh, a football game right here on the screen one of the other things here that i like is in the previous station radio that we had uh it did not have this um message on the top right what they did is they laid this message up here that's the bluetooth name it's called car kit the pin code when you make that first connection is zero 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 so that's important to know um, as you're setting up your apple carplay or android auto and as you set that up you can see it immediately connects you to the apple carplay so again each and every time you restart your car turn it back on um, it should find the bluetooth connection on your phone and make that connection right there to start up apple carplay all right, guys, well, that's just about it. Uh, there's a lot of functionality in this radio, so I highly suggest that if you do make the upgrade, sit in the car, spend a couple hours playing with it, make sure you're close to a Wi-Fi connection or you have a hotspot on your phone so you can log into things like Google Maps, Google Mail, um, if you have some streaming uh, accounts that you wanna log into and download, do all that. Um, but yeah, spend it, spend like an hour playing around the car and uh, I, I promise you, you'll have an, an awesome experience. Uh, there's just so much that this radio can do. It's kind of scary actually, like I said, watching uh, watching Netflix while you're driving is not, not something I would suggest. I would encourage you not to do that, but if you're pulled over, you're in a safe space and you can watch some streaming content, you can do it right on this radio, which is pretty wild. Like I said, one of the biggest things for me is you know, in the with the old radio that we had, we had a T10 and it was kind of, um, you know, uh, just wasn't working consistently. Um, but the stock radio, the screen was significantly small. And, you know, while it had that native uh, navigation app in it, I didn't think that app was all that great. It didn't really update real time and show me traffic. Google Maps, you have that Waze, you have that um, even Gaia and Onyx Off-Road, like you have that functionality as well. So for me, this fit the bill. I can stream my Spotify. Uh, I can get text message alerts. I can make phone calls through this thing. It's just, it's miles and miles better than the stock radio that we had before. So if you're looking to make the upgrade, I highly suggest you do it. The other thing I would say too is, Yes, these things aren't cheap. These aren't $200 radios. They're not singled in radios that we used to install in our cars back in the day. This was custom made for the fifth gen Toyota 4Runner. So price is a little bit higher than some of your standard uh, universal radios, but that's okay because to me, this has that stock look and feel and uh, to me, it's worth the price right there. The other thing I would say too, is if you are looking to install the radio uh, yourself, it's something that I, I think you can do as a DIY. Uh, you could take it to Best Buy or, you know, um, at a car audio shop and they might charge you a couple hundred bucks to install it. Uh, check out the video that we did a couple days ago where we actually installed the Udasatia radio. I promise you it's something that'll take maybe an hour, hour and 10 minutes at max. If you have a uh, 10 millimeter wrench, a couple plastic pry removal tools, uh, some small Phillips head screwdrivers, you can get this done very, very simply. There's no wiring, there's no splicing, there's no heat shrinking of any of the wires. It's very, very straightforward. So um, if you upgrade and you buy this radio, you could get this installed yourself and that's the price right there. It's the cost of the radio and then you have all that nice functionality and features. So anyway, uh, check back more. We're gonna have more content on this channel, uh, probably specific to the fifth gen 4Runner, but we'll see, we might do some other stuff. So stay tuned. Make sure to hit that like button and make sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it.